Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. I'm Billy Thorpe. This is Judson Brock. Excited about today's episode. We're going to be talking to Jordan Nason and Luke Tippett. We've been having a great time pre-show with those guys. Uh, they're Skyping in, so we will try our best to not have that weird communication delay or whatnot. So uh, we're going to bring them on in just a minute. Uh, let us know where you are watching from. Uh, and yeah, we're excited to be back, man. We, we got through Hurricane Dorian uh, without a scratch. Well, we got without a scratch anyway. Looks like you guys did pretty good around here as well, Judson. Yeah, so, it, it wasn't not that too bad. bad. Wind was wasn't too uh, too brutal, at least not Wilmington. Yeah, man, we we chicken out, dude. We don't stay we don't stay around for hurricanes. We uh, put some boards on the windows, get in the car, <laughs> roll on out of here. That's that's uh, that's uh, that's cute. That's cute. <laughs> cute. I, okay, man. Well, I was the one fishing in the, know, on the I South know, Olson know, River, Watauga River, catching some native brown trout while you guys were here drinking whiskey and hoping you didn't get blasted. I know. And I was just going to come back to the damages and down I was getting trees. so jealous. I was calling Billy, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm walking down to the South Holster right now. I'm going to do a little trout fishing this evening. That's awesome, man. Hey, Forrest Gray just jumped on and said he's uh, in Myrtle Beach tonight, so I guess he's going to fish with you tomorrow. Yeah, looking so forward to up. fishing tomorrow, Forrest. So that's going to be awesome, time. man. So, yeah, guys, uh, be sure we you know, we hadn't done this in a week, so we're trying to remember all the stuff that we got to talk about and do, but be sure to like, share, comment, do all those things. Excited to be back on. Uh, so, Justin, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the sponsors, and we'll talk about that. And we'll, For sure. We'll just roll right through this thing. There they go. We got Seto, Ice Strike, Afco, Marshware, Eastern <laughs> Angling, Smoothie King, and Thorpe Creative. Dude, okay, I, I'm totally... I'm totally stoked about Smoothie King, man. So a friend of mine owns... Smoothie King's the new, our new thing. It's a new thing, man. You know, it's like some people are like, man, this might not be the greatest fit, but I call my friend over Smoothie King that owns it. I was like, hey, we got this podcast. We always, I always typically get a smoothie anyway on my way here. So I'm like, why not try to get it for free? So dude, he's like, yeah, I'll sponsor the show. Just go get a smoothie whenever. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, go check out Smoothie <laughs> King. Uh, man, just a lot of, I mean... For you guys, whatever. You might be too manly for a smoothie, but not me, dude. I'll, I'll crush it. The uh, banana boat is where it's at. That's the banana my boat. One. I like, there's a coffee mocha, ch I can't remember what it is, it's called like an almond mocha, whatever. Um, dude, that thing is pretty solid. So Coffee on a mocha? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it's officially called, but it has almonds in it, it has coffee in it, and it tastes really good. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, guys, go out there and check out AFCO, uh, Marshware, Smoothie King, Eastern Angling, if you want to book a trip with Judson here, Thorpe Creative, if you need to print shirts, hats, or any of that stuff, no minimums. Um, and then AFCO, Ice Marshware. Strike. I'm wearing the new Marshware shorts right now, and this sounds like a total plug. I guess it is. But they're hands down my favorite shorts I've ever owned. I just got them. I haven't, I've never had a pair of them. But so you've worn them for what, 20 minutes? I've worn them for All day. four days straight now. They got blood stains <laughs> on them from fish. That's perfect. And uh, they're, they're, they're honestly so comfortable. Go check them out. They're, uh, they're great shorts. Yeah. Hey, Griffin, Griffin said er, smoothies on the show. We're going to have smoothies on the show next week for sure. We're going to be, gotta, we're gonna be got bringing those smoothies on, on the show. <laughs> Definitely. 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 Uh, so go go check those guys out. Go check out Ice Strike uh, Fishing. Save up to forty percent on their website. Make sure you hook those guys up and check out Judd's Judd Brock Fishing. Uh, you just did a a YouTube yeah. show or a YouTube um, video talking about the Texas jig. Am I saying that right? Yeah, the the Texas eye jig. Texas eye jig. Mm -hmm. So go check that out. Really Some cool underwater footage in there. Yeah, super yeah. sick. Wait, what is that? Uh, Forrest Gray says, I still want a sweatshirt, Billy. I was just telling Judd, I need to send Forrest a sweatshirt for sure. Um, guys, we were, we were going to do Catch of the Week this week, but we're a little bit behind, and so we're not going to do that. We're just going to postpone that until next week, and we're going to try to get caught up with some of the product that we already have to ship out and things like that. So we'll resume Catch of the Week next week, but to be well. entered to win, be sure to send us your latest catch um, as, as well there, and uh, we'll put it on our Instagram, have a chance to be on the live show, Um all those types of things. So be ready to do that. And so Judd, man, what's going on out there on the water, dude? I know it's right after the hurricane. So, so what about the conditions? What do you Honestly, got going on? The hurricane didn't mess up too much. The water's definitely a little dirtier. I, I've only fished two days now since the hurricane. I was in Raleigh for Saturday and I uh, didn't fish on Sunday, but it, it's been, it's been good, man. I haven't, I haven't fished in shore except for down South a little bit around the river, Cape Fear river. Um, the trout fishing was really good. And, um, the mullet run is in full swing off the beach. So there's a, a lot, lot of people on, out there on Instagram just munching down on them, like yeah, them, frying Blue them fish, up. Spanish albacore, you know, uh, redfish. The redfish are thick on the inlets right now because 
all the mullet are just funneling out the inlet. So uh, it's it's been uh, it's been good. It's, the fishing's been good. I think it's going to be a really good fall. The trout the trout fishing's been good, and um, I think we're, uh, we're we're breaking into that fall fishing pattern. Heck yeah, man! There's some albacore out there, maybe albacore. Did yeah. I just did I just out you on that one? No, no, I, I, I just oh, said good. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you did say that. I wasn't listening. Yeah, they're out there in uh, in the ocean. In, I'm just they're not hard to find. Look for the birds. <laughs> look for the birds. Look for the big splash. Take your fly rod out there and try that. That's what. Yep. That's don't my. Don't trout set. Don't trout set. We were just talking about that. Maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, Jordan, I'm gonna go ahead and out Jordan before he even gets on the show tonight. He is he is definitely getting into fly fishing, which I'm a huge fan of fly fishing. For the people who follow the show for more than half an episode, you know I'm a I'm a fly fishing guy and, and love it. Not that great at it, but hey, whatever. Went to the mountains for the hurricane. Caught a lot of native brown trout up there, some rainbow trout. And then my father-in-law caught some big, um, they stock the Watauga River up there as well. And so he caught some pretty nice, some like some pretty nice sized trout. Heck yeah. Like the big stocked ones. I think, I can't remember they call them brute trout or it's some weird. Brook? Br- no, it's not brook. Uh, it's like, it's like, it's whatever way, that, I don't know. They, they call them something different. Nickname. But you can tell yeah. if you ever go up there and fish, you catch one, it's got like a chopped tail on the back. Oh yeah, the dorsal, they clip the dorsal. Yeah, they clip it, yeah. Mm. So you can, you can always tell those. Um, so yeah, man. Well, dude, excited to have you back on the show, Judson. <laughs> I know. I'm excited to have you back excited on the you back, show, dude. Billy. We're trying to, we're trying to race to Tennessee and do the show last week, but you know, we have a, we have a one-year-old and a ton of people from South Carolina were evacuated. And then we were, you know, didn't know what the traffic looked like. We actually got there in record time, took a little alternate route, uh, did pretty good, but all of our thoughts go out to the, to people in the Outer Banks, the Bahamas, everybody that was affected by Dorian. I uh, mean, super hate that. And Wilmington, you know, we were looking, I mean, we're looking at this hurricane coming right at us and, and thank, thank goodness we, you know, weren't hit by that and stayed off the coast. But if there's plenty of ways out there to help people in the Bahamas, to help people in the outer banks. Uh, so be sure to, to support those communities. They really need our help. Um, so, so whatever you can do. And Justin, I've been throwing some ideas around, you know, just from our little community that we're building here of how we can help out as well. So we'll bring you some more information if, if we flesh something out that makes sense. Uh, for everybody, but there's a there's a really cool GoFundMe. This guy named Oliver White. He's really big in the fly fishing world. He started for he he owns and runs uh, the Abaco Lodge down in the Bahamas. So it's kind of a cool way to help uh, with a fishing cool. twist. He started a GoFundMe for all the families that help out there in that that community where the lodge is. Not for the lodge, but for the to help the families get back on their feet. So you could go check that out, Oliver White on Instagram, and they'll be it'll be linked to that GoFundMe. So okay. if you want to go give two bucks, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever you can give to help out down there, they are literally that whole. Abaco area is just flat. I mean, there's nothing left, so anything yeah. helps. Man, crazy, crazy. My my father-in-law just said Kevin had the catch of the week. So Kevin, if you guys were follow us on Instagram, if you don't, you should, is my dog. So we have this blue oh, healer yeah. mix with some kind of long hair terrier. And so we were fishing the Wataga, and my wife calls and says, hey, check out this picture. She sends me a picture. It's our dog pulled out of brown trout out of the South Holston River and was eating it. So... Pretty Hungry interesting, dog. man. Dude, my it then it was a pretty good sized trout, man. I was pretty impressed. That but is impressive. anyway, enough of the trout talk. We'll get back to saltwater fishing. Yeah. Uh we got Jordan, uh we got Jordan Nason, we got Luke Tippett on. We're gonna go ahead and bring those guys on. So let me find out where I put them at and see if I can bring them on camera here. What's going on, guys? Luke What's Tippett, up? Jordan Nason. Hey, how's it going? Did you did you unmute us? I am I am all- I unmuted you. I had to mute you on the first one. Actually, I had you unmuted on the on our first camera shot when we came into the show, <laughs> and then uh, and then I unmute and then I muted you back because you guys cannot behave. Y'all are rowdy. <laughs> Y'all are a rowdy crew. A rowdy team. A rowdy crew over there at um, at at Full Rudder. You guys are rowdy. Yeah. Well, oh, look at the delay. Yeah. We had to get in the spirit of it. The pre-show was fun talking with you guys. Dude, it absolutely was. So before we get into it, I just wanted to share a little bit about you guys, maybe get some more information because you, you guys do a couple different things. Uh, you're co-founders of Full Rudder Creative. So tell me a little bit about that. What's what's your main objective over there? Take that one. Yeah, so uh, you know, I've got a background in advertising and marketing degree from UNCW and was working in advertising for years, got into photography. All of a sudden, people started asking me to you know do some photos and then they asked, started asking for videos for their websites when they were redoing their websites. And I was like, oh, man, this sounds awesome. I, maybe I could you know, go out on my own. And I just thought I really needed a good partner that understood uh, you know, video and photo and marketing. And 
saw Luke at church one day, and he had just come back from an RV trip across yeah. the country, and he was doing some of that, I think, like just getting his feet wet with it on his own. And I was like, man, I should grab him, and we should just do something together. So, yeah, that's what happened. So, yeah, we just initially started. Jordan was doing photo work. I was doing video work. Uh, and we all, you know, we started just in the, actually the outdoor industry doing a lot of, uh, you know, fishing brands, uh, like icon coolers, a couple other local brands, um, you know, some local boat dealers, stuff like that. Uh, and now we just mainly focus on corporate and commercial work. So any, uh, anything and everything, um, in the business world, um, we do. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and, man. And, and you guys do some great work. So, and what's the name, what's your website? I didn't even take a note on that. Yeah. It's full rudder creative.com. That's too easy, man. Fullruddercreative.com. No hyphens, no underscores. That's good. No, Fullrudder Creative. So if you yeah. get, so anybody listening or watching, if you're a business owner and you are fit their fit their credentials there and you need some creative identity, brand identity, things like that, photo, video, let them holler at them. But also, Jordan, you take photography. You sell photography as well. You take pictures and sell some beautiful – is that still something you're doing? Yeah. So, well, that was how it kind of started. I was still working in advertising, and I just I had this vision that I was going to become a photographer literally driving down the road and saw this vision of myself as a photographer, just a little bit older, a little bit grayer. And That's I was cool. like, I don't know how this is going to happen, but I'm, you know, God wants me to be a photographer. And I was convicted from like that day forward. Wow. And I mean, it with every ounce of blood pumping through my veins, I was convicted that I knew I was going to be a photographer. I didn't really know what kind. So I started off just kind of taking my camera everywhere. Like people say, you know, there's like, Oh, just go take pictures of things. So, just took my camera everywhere, and I basically I said yes to everything. Like people would come up to me and say, "Like, That's hey, sketchy. do you want to do this?" And I was like, "Yes, yeah, sure, I'll try that." And I was like, "I'm just gonna say yes to everything and see where this takes me, and try to figure out what kind of photographer I'm supposed to be." Because I thought at first, you know, I wanted to be in magazines and tell stories, but all the magazines I sent ideas to, they were like, "Yeah, Jordan, that's a great idea, but you have to write the article too." <laughs> and I that was like, "My well, downfall as well." Yeah, I was like, I don't think I can learn how to be a journalist. I don't do words. Yeah. <laughs> I've got this idea. Like, I'm good with ideas because in advertising, that was what I, you know, we sell ideas. And so I was good with the idea, and then I could take the photo of the idea, but, yeah, the, the, the journalism words. side was out. And then so I just started taking photos of surfing and stuff, and, yeah, then people were like, you should have an art show. So, anyways, that, to answer your question, that's how I got into the All art. Right. So they just said, you should have an art show you would have a lot of people show up. And I was like, this sounds really cool. I'd love to be an artist, so let's see how it goes. And uh, yeah, I spent a bunch of money on the first art show and I made a little bit of it back, but a lot of people showed up and a lot of people were inspired and like re-inspired me to, to do it, to give it a try. And so, uh, yeah, I went on to sell a lot of art for a couple of years, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I can't legally say how much because I don't want the IRS to come after me, but a good amount. <laughs> I don't want to talk about all those cash transactions, but it was pretty good. Well, and then, and then Luke, I don't want to leave you behind here, man, but you are also, I mean, you do a lot of creative stuff and you and I've done a couple projects together as well. Um, yeah. but you're the owner of Topwater Guide Co. Um, yeah. so you're, yeah. you're, you're doing a lot of Topwater Guide in short trip. So tell us how we can get in touch with you and, and all those kinds of things. If you guys yeah. watch it and wants to book a trip with you. Right, yeah, if you want to book a trip, you can, easiest thing to do is text me on my cell, 910-264-3472, but also just follow me over on Instagram, Luke underscore Tippett, and if you don't know how to spell my last name, it has two P's and two T's at the end. Or it's on the screen. E-T-T, just remember P-P. T T and you'll be there. <laughs> P P T T. And if you uh, just take a screenshot of the screen, all that information except for the phone numbers on there. So yep. go check that out. And he's uh, drinking wine there. That's the hillbilly wine right there. Yeah, that's, um, is that that's me? That. <laughs> <laughs> what what flavor wine is that? That's, that's, that's brown wine. That's brown. That's brown wine. That came right out of the Cape Fear River, right there, boys. <laughs> Last week. Well, awesome, man. Well, it's good to get to know you guys and, uh, you know, get, I mean, obviously we know you, but just to um, let everybody else get a little insight on your background, on your history. And so we'll, we'll get into it, man. We'll get into tournament fishing. So you guys are tournament fishing partners and maybe share a little bit about how you got into that. And we found out how you found each other in the business world. How did you find yeah. each other in the tournament world or in the fishing world? And how'd y'all, and in that, how'd y'all get into fishing too? Yeah. 
So I guess let's rewind. Start with yours, how you got into fishing. Yeah, so I got into fishing, uh, fishing with my dad, grandfather, uncle. Uh, my whole family was really into fishing. So I've been doing it since early age, uh, going surf fishing mainly. Um, dad used to take us up to, uh, you know, Cape, Cape uh, Lookout National Seashore over there on the Core Banks, um, do a lot of surf trips like that. You know, grew up going down to Carolina Beach, uh, surf fishing early in the morning. Uh, that was that was kind of my intro, um, and started doing the inshore thing a little bit more seriously um, in high school, and and kind of from there, it's just been you know more interest and more fun since since that point. How about you? How'd so, you get into it? Yeah, so uh, my dad's from Louisiana, and uh, so. They always were into like frog legs and catfish. And so when I was a kid, we'd go up to like the lake and uh, I, he'd just be like, Jordan, go find some worms. And then we'd go, you know, catfish or catch sunfish and whatever we'd catch on a worm. And, and then he'd be like, all right, now go get some frogs. And, you know, we'd cut the legs off and put them on the grills. And so that was like my intro. He wasn't really an angler, but we had a good time hanging out on the lake and fishing like that. And then when I moved here, I was 18 years old. And, uh, you know, some other guys from UNCW, uh, actually, you guys might know him, Simba. It's a crazy South African friend yeah. of mine from UNCW. He's been running around since day one that he got here catching fish like a crazy man. And yeah. so he was one of my first friends to inspire me because he was on foot, and he would go up and down the north end, south end of Wrightsville Beach and just crush fish. And he got me super inspired to go catch fish uh, on, in the ocean and in the bays. And then from there, I, you know, I lived at Wrightsville Beach, so... You know, I see people, uh, you know, see people catching things from the pier, and then I try to do it from land under the pier. So catching like black drum and flounder, and, you know, uh, trout and Spanish up under the pier. So I lived right by Johnny Mercer's, and uh, yeah, that was just, I guess that was it. And then I guess catch one day I took a canoe out in the back, like you know, on the back side of the island in Banks Channel area, least cut, and caught my first redfish in a canoe, and I think I caught like four of them with a friend of mine and we just, I mean we were we had a blast and I was hooked at that point like, and I'm pretty sure that story no pun intended they kept all the redfish oh yeah I didn't know what, <laughs> what? they were I, was, I don't know what they are but I'm eating them <laughs> oh, forget you're that the problem I'm just kidding <laughs> Jordan is the problem oh yeah he has since learned but if you heard it if you heard what he said go to Lee's cut all the redfish are in the yeah um, <laughs> I knew had, I knew it I knew it we're, Sorry, guys. We had no clue. We were just like cast after cast. And I'm like, throw it in the boat. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> <laughs> They're uh, chewing. Yeah, it. it was a blast. And actually, another my roommate at the time, he never fished at all either. And I dragged him out on the dock there uh, somewhere on the you know backside of there. Not Lee's Cut, but uh, <laughs> so, maybe he's there. Some other and, dis undisclosed location where we caught tons could, of redfish. You could just throw you could just throw a mud minnow or a mullet out in front of this dock and catch a flounder like any day of the week. And so I'm like, man, I gotta, you got to you got to come try this. So he throws he throws his out there, and then we're just sitting there, literally lay the lay the rod on the dock, and he proceeds to catch a ten pound flounder off the dock, his first time ever flounder fishing. There you go. <laughs> and he, I don't know if he's watching. His name's Benny Baldwin. He lives at the Outer Banks. And he's actually, he's a videographer, does weddings. Um, great guy. But that was just classic. So that was when I got into it. I guess I was around 18. I got into this inshore fishing for redfish and flounder. And trout eluded me for years, to be honest. Sea trout were a tough one for me. Always kind of like, always wanted citation sea trout. But, uh, yeah. Well, let's, to, to get back on track a little bit. So we met at church. Um, uh -huh. That's how we met, like friendship wise. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Jordan mentioned that we started working together, um, and that was what about two years ago at this point. Yep. Uh, ish. Ha has it been that long? Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, I think it was uh, it was fall. It was, it was almost two years. Yeah. yeah, almost. It'll be two years in about a month or two. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Started because we just got back in town from our trip, and two years ago in October. So it'll be next month we started and, yeah yeah my son dashel was about to be born dash was born in october yeah. and we said my wife and i because i've been doing the photo thing a couple of years yeah we said after dash is born you can quit your job and you can go follow your dream so that which, was like yeah which is to be a tournament fisherman <laughs> yes yeah we're getting to yeah, that. That, that <laughs> was, yeah that's part of that's part of the business but yeah so that's why we started basically that's why we started tournament fishing together as well because honestly after it all shook out it's just easier to fish with him 
and you know he it just makes more sense we're working together that way we can control each other's schedules like <laughs> yeah. i don't be like hey jordan i'm going out of town for this fishing tournament yeah and jordan's like why are you going to another tournament like oh no you just come with me now <laughs> and well, that's, yeah, that's, smart. that's super smart that was one of my big questions was like i wanted to get into like what makes a good partnership as a tournament as a tournament team like being available being available <laughs> any good relationship i will tell you this and, and i've had some great tournament partners in the past I've, I've been tournament fishing for i don't know a while unsuccessfully pretty much but uh, i will say I've, i fished with my brother i fished with my dad i fished with my buddy Wyatt. all these guys awesome to fish with but I, I will say jordan is a great partner because and i fish with a lot of people like i said because um he's easy to get along with on the boat he's chill so it's and i'm pretty chill too i've heard but, he might make a pretty mean sandwich too is that true okay. yeah yeah i will say the easiest thing about fishing with Jordan <laughs> is the fact that he keeps me well fed yeah i'm like uh, i'm like luke you look thirsty like throws sandwiches i mean i never used to eat food during a tournament that's what you get when you fish with somebody 10 years older than you yeah. you know i'm just taking care of them i'm like here the nursery here, here, here. Oh, nurture. Yeah. that is how you find a tournament partner find a nurturing <laughs> older person well some older gentleman that makes good sandwiches that's that's it the pre yeah that's a good one yeah that's it no but luke i mean yeah like he said we get along because i think we're both pretty chill um well, we got similar personalities. I think you yeah. you probably want to tournament fish with somebody that has a similar personality too. I don't know. Um, like for example, when we blew up the motor in Georgetown to start off our day, yeah. I got to tell you guys, we were really confident about this tournament. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, we were like really confident. Yeah. Like we were on good fish. We've been going there since last year. So I pre-fished with Luke down there last year. Yeah. And. Yeah, so the motor blows up, and this I felt like this was a true test of our, you know, partnership as a fishing team. The motor blows up, and we both kind of look at each other, and we go, all right, what can we do to fix it? So we start trying to fix it. So we spend a, a good hour or two trying to, you know, diagnose what's happening just to see if we can still fish before, you know, there's no freak out. Nobody freaks out. Yeah. I think you, you could definitely imagine some of your friends, right, guys, like just losing their cool – because you know, we spent a lot of time. And That's money. me, man. That's me. That's who I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying we don't lose our cool in other parts of our lives. I'm, I don't know about Luke, but I definitely do. But right. we, yeah, I sure. think as a fishing team, we were like, we tried to fix the motor and it didn't work. So eventually we put the trolling motor down. And even though we were in a place where there's not really any redfish, no, just gar. Caught, caught a couple nice gar. We <laughs> put the trolling motor down and we tried to fish. We were just like, you know, what are you going to do? So we tried to fish for a few hours. I thought that was that was a testament yeah, to like super cool. fishing partnership. Well, you know what? The uh, Jordan Lee, who won two of the Bassmaster Classics um, yep. in a row, I, I know his I, boat broke down in one of the Classics, and he fished one cool. spot on the trolling motor the whole time and won it. Yeah, the well, he was in a good yeah. spot when that happened. Yeah, you got to be in a good spot when you break down. That was awesome. He, he, yeah, he, he came up on those docks, and I think it, there was like some underwater structure or something, a nice point underwater. Yeah. And he wore them out. I mean, you were in the middle of a ditch, pretty much. So. <laughs> but that was your inspiration all the time. Like, Jordan Lee did it. We're going to do it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was hopeful that we would catch a fish. Yeah. We probably used the trolling motor. No kidding. Like, we probably trolled, like, three miles. <laughs> oh, my God. I think that's when we had to get new batteries. Yeah. <laughs> just fried them. Yeah. yeah. We were just like, we're going to try to fish. We're just going to go. Yeah. It was a long day. But, yeah. no, but thoughts like that is what I think we probably both had in the back of our head, like, but this sucks, but what if? How what sick if? would it what be if? if we want it like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, if we, yeah, or if we just wade in two fish, like, yeah, win it would have been the epic story. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but wade in two fish. Well, that leads me to my next question, literally, that I have written down here on the piece of paper. It's a great intro. What's the most epic day y'all have had on the water together? Because that sounds like one of the least epic days. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think for us two together, one of the most epic days was actually pre-fishing for that, for that tournament. And I will say it wasn't epic because we caught so many fish, but it's because we found so many new spots in one day. Nice, and nice. It is the day that you sight casted a fish with a popping cord. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. So, so we, we roll into a new spot, and immediately, man, we push up schools of fish, and we're stoked. So, like, I mean, I throw a top water in there. I, we have a couple blow-ups on top water. He throws popping cork and a gulp in there, and he catches a couple fish. You know, he's catching fish. I'm, like, not catching fish. 
not because I wasn't trying, just because I wasn't catching fish. <laughs> anyway, he was trying to pre-fish properly. I was trying to see what was actually sure. in that brown water. Yeah, 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 because we couldn't necessarily You can't see tell how deep it is. I mean, this is, all right, so this is going to go into a later question, but people will ask you if you fish with hooks or not pre-fishing. And and this, that was so a question, I yeah. On it here because we're in a new spot. Yep. We don't really know what fish are there. Judging by pushes, it looks like there's redfish everywhere, but the water was so brown, it could have been six inches deep, and they yeah. could have been rays. They could have been big Popeye mullet. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I mean, we want to at least see one fish in the boat, measure it away. Yeah. Like, right? I yeah. Mean, so, yeah. So, anyway, sorry. So yeah, throw that epic in day, yeah, epic day. So, yeah, we're in this new spot. Fish the front section. It's awesome. Push back a little further as the tide, you know, comes up. And, and yeah, we could see that fish, yeah. though. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and there was some awesome sight fishing back there as well. So, yeah, we did yeah, see Yeah, we one got fish. into some clearer water. After we got through the brown water, guys, we got into some clearer yeah. water. And there was a fish. I mean, I, I swear, <laughs> just sitting there. And I threw a spoon to it. Like with his and side it, and it's just like going like this. Yeah. Fired and, up. and then <laughs> it just moved 10 feet and stayed there. And then Jordan cast it, and I just was like, you ain't going to catch that fish. He said that while yeah, I was like, cast it. In his face. Like, you're not going to catch that fish, man. And then, like, literally the cork hits the fish in the head, and the, the fish just goes. And I set the hook, like, instantly. Yeah, that's I'm awesome. Like, the best, like, told you so moment ever. Yeah, I was know? like, well, <laughs> if I'm going to be wrong, this is what I want to be wrong about. Catch the fish, man. <laughs> But yeah, I will say that day we didn't find a new spot. Catch any more in there? After no, that. we didn't. I, I would not <laughs> let us catch any more fish after that. But just the discovery of new spots and catching yeah. a couple quality fish—that that's what made it epic. That's super yeah. cool. That's what I always I always enjoy those days too. More where it's like, all right, yeah, there's a big school. I could sit here and catch ten out of this. But like to yeah. go spot to spot, and even if you don't catch them, but finding fish in different spots each day or catching one or two in different spots—that's yeah. always so much more enjoyable. I think right. personally. Yeah. And that's not to mention the day that we did fish together in Louisiana and like a hundred fish. Yeah, so that was, yeah, I wasn't even thinking as as, that day. As far as catching fish goes, yeah, I think that was the day. Yeah, I had a day. So I'll just give you two quick ones that aren't as detailed. <laughs> we had a day in Louisiana with Luke's dad. This was last year before the tournament? Yeah. When I passed I you, there. Luke, that day, you're like, I never see you in Wilmington, but I just passed you in Louisiana. Literally passed <laughs> on the highway, coming across the bridge in Louisiana. I'm like, oh, cool. What's up, Judd? How's it going? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. We're going to hang out here, but not in Wilmington. It was my first trip to Louisiana, <laughs> and I fished with Wyatt a couple days. Uh, his fishing partner at the time, he had his boat, and we you know, we did good. It was fun. I love Louisiana, the weather was terrible, though. The whole time we were there, it was raining yeah. every day. Um, so you needed two sets of bibs. And then I went out with Luke and his dad, and it was just cool to be a part of, like, you know, their family camaraderie, like, you know, father, son. I mean, just I'm friends with his dad, too. So it was really fun, and we, I mean, we had, like, all-time numbers. We, yeah, we, we called, whacked the fish, man. You had a count going. In the yeah, duck ponds? In the grass was our, duck ponds? No, not on duck, but we trout fish, too. Wait, but gotcha. we did catch bass. We caught largemouth bass. Yeah. We caught redfish. We caught speckled trout. What yeah. are those other weird trout? little trouts? sand trout. Oh, yeah. Wait, <laughs> little weird trout. My favorite, <laughs> my favorite line of the night. Weird trout. <laughs> what were those really little weird <laughs> trout? <laughs> We ate those sand trout. They were pretty yeah. good. I mean, no, those are good. Man. I mean, we were all over the place. You know, you can't see land all day long. You're drenched. And, you know, I'm with a father and son, like, that are just awesome to hang out with. So, to me, that was an epic day. And then uh, our last tournament that we fished, the Hook and Bones, being our best finish together, third yeah. place. Yeah. Uh, you know, competing neck and neck with some of our friends. That Some friends of Corey and Richard, who I've been friends with for 15, 20 years. And uh, Alan and Jason, who ended up winning it, and Corey Richard got second. So that was really fun competing with them. Plus, we had like an epic day on the water. Yeah, we had about 20 fish. We just had good nice. sight pushes all morning long. Yeah. Just, you know, the stuff that, not even when you're catching them, just the stuff you see that gets, you know, gives you chicken skin. Keeps you, you know? engaged. <laughs> yes. For the stuff sure. that makes you want to be a fisherman, right? right. The yeah. stuff that makes you want to go back after not catching any is those days when you see them pushing out of the water um so yeah those two days really stuck out for me so, so dude we, we kind of talked a little i mean quite a bit about a lot of stuff there so you guys have a good chemistry uh, good camaraderie seems like you've been fishing together how long have you guys been fishing together quick answer two years one year oh not even yeah I would nine, say months. Two nine years. months two years nine, nine months. months seriously just and enough to just uh, enough time to birth something great <laughs> <laughs> 
sure. But no, I think but it is nine months, yeah. But Luke still doesn't tell me any of his fishing spots. Like I don't know where he fishes. Like if he caught trout last week with his dad, I have no idea where and he won't tell me. So I know not what? even to ask. Hey, hey. Well Luke like, runs a Patreon account, it's thirty dollars a month and he'll send you those spots. Do you not know that? <laughs> yeah, Judd's on that first. No. <laughs> yeah, Judd Judd's on it, yeah. <laughs> Vicinity, though I'm saying, we, like, caught him, we caught him south of here. Yeah, south of here. Like yeah, it's only- really good south today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jordan, uh, Jordan, you gotta be, you gotta be a friend like me. Like any of these guys will take me fishing because they know I'm directionally challenged and I don't have a boat, and they're uh-huh. never gonna see me there again. So sell your boat, become like weird on the water, can't figure out your way weird. home, and <laughs> then you'll be fine. Billy's just super <laughs> weird on the water. I'm just hey. <laughs> <laughs> new, new t-shirt and sticker Dude, weird, on the water. weird on the water weird on the water i like man. it weird, weird on, on the water, water. Is it? That's w-o-w a... <laughs> wow 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 <laughs> weird on the water hey man and jason or jordan jason gosh jordan i'll get your name right one, one of these it's days today. you owe me five dollars all right perfect <laughs> So, so let me, let me ask you guys this question. So Luke, you've been fishing for, for a long time, tournament fishing, Jordan, you and I talked earlier. Um, I, I made it right. The post I put on Instagram where I was like, I basically said, Oh, if you have been fishing a lot and you know a lot about fishing, Luke Tippett will help you. If you don't know anything about fishing tournaments, then, then Jordan will help you. I didn't really mean it that way. A lot of people took it. Even my wife was like, I think you dissed that guy in a weird way. And I'm not even in the industry. And I'm like, I probably did. So I apologize for that earlier. I apologize on the show as well. But I think it's really interesting because it is a different dynamic. And I feel like, you, you know, it, it when you when I fish with Judson, for instance, I see him like in his element. We went out fishing. We won't talk about this trip until later on the year. But probably one of the best trips I've ever been on and definitely caught one of the biggest inshore fish I've ever ever caught i think i actually showed luke the picture but we won't talk about it because we're going to share it later oh, uh, the mid- the story of the midnight dragon the story- <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't always fish but when i do i catch the biggest ones <laughs> okay anyway so tell me about that dynamic because you know if you have somebody like J- like judd is kind of coaching me so what's the roles on the boat is it the hey i'm the captain and you're you're giving me sandwiches and water or Tell us about that. Tell us about that camaraderie right Rubbing there. Rubbing his back, feeding him. Luke's the only one fishing. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let Jordan tell it from his perspective. And yeah, I'll, I'll tell you we'll how I, I, I No, you, right? I mean, I will say, I'll be honest with you. When Luke first, so when Luke and I were friends at church and he first told me he was starting a charter business, I was like, most guys, I'm like, that are my age and when we think, I'm like, oh God, another young guy starting a charter business. Here we go. Yeah, I bet he knows everything about fishing, you know. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> you know, he'll be out at the jetty. <laughs> fishing live bait here we go the chat and so i just kind of like you know i don't have like at that point in my life i was not like this involved in fishing as i am right now so i like didn't really have any other opinion than that at, at first and that and then after that i was like good luck i hope he does well <laughs> and then i started fishing with him and i was like you know i'm 10 years old and i think i said that earlier so i i feel like i have more years fishing than him but the guy is not only an ace out of the water and outside of fishing, but he's he's just he's really knowledgeable about fishing, and I learn stuff from him. I do. It's not the get my sandwiches, you know, water thing. Nah. He definitely is in charge of the boat, and so I have my roles because of what we do with the YouTube. My role is to do. If we're gonna film anything with GoPros, I have to do it. Yeah. Luke's gonna focus on the boat and getting us, you know. I mean, what you guys, I think, probably don't realize if you don't fish tournaments is time management is really important. Um, when you're free fishing, you can kind of do whatever you want, but, like, time management and tides are super important yeah. when you're fishing tournaments. And timing everything just right and having a plan and, like, knowing how long it takes to get the next spot. So Luke's got that stuff, like, dialed. Like, he knows exactly how long it's going to take to get to this spot to the next spot before we do it. Um so I guess, yes, he's the captain of the boat for sure. And something that I'm telling you that I learned, the guy's 10 years younger than me, but he's got way more hours on the water than me. And I've learned a ton about, I don't think it's the same as like maybe what you're describing with Justin, but I definitely like, he sits back and he, you know, he bites his tongue a couple times and then he'll see something. I'll be like, Hey, why don't you try this? And I'm like, okay, I, I think I'm pretty open-minded. Oh yeah. I'm certainly not a stubborn, uh, older fishing partner that's why we get along well but right yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty open-minded um 
yeah, and I think it's it's pretty cool because I get to like look at it through a different perspective now. To me, in the past, redfish, I didn't think of it as like such a challenge, and now doing it specifically with artificials, with the rules of tournament fishing and the time slot that you're allowed. I yeah. mean, you're really a, a sucker to the tide. Yeah, like the mm. tide determines everything for us yeah. and where we can fish and how long we can fish there, because. You know, you just can't stay in certain places through the whole tide, yeah. and the fish aren't in certain places through the whole tide. Um, I don't know that. Yeah, and then I do obviously make a really good sandwich. <laughs> yeah, he, he does make a good sandwich, and that is a big plus of having him on the team. But uh, definitely, yeah, I, it's it's easy to fish with Jordan because he is open minded about something that he hasn't done a ton. Which is tournament fishing, yeah. Because it is, it's way different. Like you said, it's way different yeah. than than just fun fishing because you can't get stuck. You you can't you can't get stuck. You can't get out of your boat to push your boat around. You can't do any of these things during the tournament. So you have to have everything down down to the minute. Um, and he's he's picking up, uh, you know, picks up on what we need to do, and also reminding me like, hey, should we get out of here at this time? Sometimes probably being cautious about those kinds of things because we don't want to have to like we get out of the boat we're disqualified. Yeah. So oh, yeah. so things like that we have to uh, we have to keep in mind like he was saying. But you know aside from that just you know he brings the also you know kind of the different perspective from someone that has tournament fished for X amount of time. Which like different ideas because you you know sometimes if you get stuck in a rut doing like I'm gonna work this plan every single time I go to this place and he's like well maybe we should check out this area you know looking at it through a slightly different lens is super super helpful. Nice. Yeah, I think that fresh perspective, um, you know that that you guys were talking about kind of well that we've mentioned you know a few times before the show especially last week because we were supposed to do the show last week sure. just that yeah. different perspective. Um, you know, definitely. I think Judson and I have that as far as even, even like what we're doing with this podcast and all this media stuff. I've done it for years and years and years. And so to have fresh perspective and, and new ideas, um, cause I think a lot of and times someone that's like, where does this cord go? <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, it's nice because, you know, I think it's the same thing. Like you guys have that camaraderie and when, you know, when I'm in here and in the studio, I'm in my zone and I'm putting together all the tech nerdy stuff and doing whatever. And then when I'm on the water, a little bit different. I don't. I don't even make ham sandwiches or bring even water. Yeah, you like, better make a ham sandwich next time. I know, dude. I gotta step it up, man. I'm over <laughs> here like it's totally different. You know, of course we're not fishing tournaments or right, right, we've right. been fishing a couple times together. Uh, but I'm like, uh, can you bait my hook? I've never put crab on a hook before. <laughs> so, um, that's, never mind. I'm not gonna say anything about crabs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, I think that's. A, I think that's pretty cool, man. I, I love that you guys have that, and I think it's like you said, it's hugely important. You're gonna spend hours and hours. You're pre-fishing. You're fishing the tournament. Yeah. So to get somebody that you like, somebody you can go get, a, you know, dinner and a beer with uh, before and yeah. after, and be comfortable with is huge. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say be open-minded too. You know, for whether you're more experienced, like mm -hmm. Luke, older than the person, you're, like be open like like me and take pointers from someone younger than you because they got a different perspective. Or be open-minded, like Luke's saying, and take pointers from me because guess what? I'm not afraid to throw a popping cork. He's not. Me. He's not. And like these <laughs> these snobby Poppy. anglers, like, they're like popping cork. That's like last resort. Yeah. Well, it's real. Guess it's what? Real real words. Billy, this is for you, buddy. I'm you ready. go with just time. Throw that popping cork behind the boat. You know, he's only casting in the front of the boat. Throw it behind the boat. <laughs> Who cares? It's just like, there's still fish back there. They just didn't eat Judson's spoon. <laughs> put a daggum. Put a daggum gulp under yeah. that popping cork. Yeah. I'm gonna put a mudman under it. And catch that fish that Justin scared with the spoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happened to me. I mean, it happens. You know, you just it just take what your perspective is and just run with it. For sure. Yeah. I, I think that's as an angler, it's so refreshing to realize, like, wait, I don't have it all figured out. Like, you start to think that your patterns, how you fish, the spots you fish, are are the only ways that I'm going to go catch a redfish today. But then you start, you know, breaking it down or taking advice from somebody else and you learn so much from different people from fishing different places. And I think that's one of the cool things about tournament fishing too, is it pushes you to learn and, and yeah. experience new, new areas. So that, that kind of brings me into the next kind of whole little segment here, the scouting and the pre-fishing. We went into that a little bit, but what are, are do y'all have any certain tools? Are y'all using Google earth, any type of like satellite imaging as well as like any other tactics when you're going to a new area to fish a tournament? What is, what's kind of y'all's y'all's breakdown? 
Yeah. I'll, well, I'll, the electronics. I'll, I'll, tack, yeah. I'll tackle this one. Yeah, definitely Google Earth. Um, if you haven't figured out that Google Earth is a good fishing tool yet, I'm here to tell you Google Earth <laughs> is a good fishing tool. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, no, it's no secret. Uh, satellite overlay is amazing. Um, so, yeah, basically what, what I'm doing when I am looking for new spots or even – maybe how spots have changed with new satellite imagery or anything. Um, basically, I'm looking for what has been productive for me in the past in my home waters, um, what's been productive for me in the past uh, away from home, um, you know, a lot of South Carolina um, for, for me. Um, and then I'm trying to replicate that on Google Earth. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take, you know, if you, if you fish around here, if you're going to different areas, um, you know, different different areas as in like, different states or different cities, yeah. different fisheries. Um, just take a spot that you've had success in and find that same spot on the map somewhere else. And it's not always possible to find the exact same thing. Like if we're fishing, um, like if we're fishing Louisiana, we're not going to find a bunch of small creeks with oyster beds. Right. Um, and, you know, unless we go way out into the Gulf. But if you um, find oyster beds shallow, you yeah. found them. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, but you know, a lot of times, even in Louisiana, I'm fishing way up in, in, in the fresher, fresher stuff yeah. for the fat fish. So you're not, I mean, you know, submerged oysters is all you're going to get. But it, it may not play out exactly like, uh, the same. Like you go up north of here, um, and you're going to have a lot of eelgrass flats and stuff like that. And we don't have a lot of that down here, um, where we are specifically, Wilmington area. It's starting to creep down this way. Um, but yeah, the coves and the points are all going to be, um, you know, shaped similarly because they're, they're cut in by the water. So find a spot here and try to copy and paste it somewhere else. That's awesome. That's a good, that's a great idea. That's great information. And, and so let me ask you this on those Google maps, which we could probably dive into that at a different show or whatever, but yeah. is some of the structure, I mean, pretty identical on those Google maps. So if, say if I found a good oyster bed here and i'm like okay i know what that looks like on a google map can i is it gonna look pretty close to the same in different areas so yeah so yes if you're you can find on google maps or google earth um when that satellite image was taken okay. so so if you find that it's been taken in the past year chances unless there's been a catastrophic event um you know it's pretty much going to be pretty similar you know the most most of the time I think. yeah you, oh yeah I was looking at the comments. Luke yeah. just got a legend. Luke, legend oh, Luke. Right. He's honestly, he's just trying to butter me up so he can buy my boat. Is, is all that is. Is that Lyndon Ray? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, let me piggyback on what Luke's saying about Google Earth from my perspective. So I think it's cool to look at, you know, like where you see elbows and where you see shallow water. But let's like break this down for people that you know maybe don't know where to go look for redfish. Well, you got to look for redfish where you can see redfish. So it's got to be looking shallow. For redfish. Yeah. Looking. Yeah. yeah. If you're looking for them, you want to confirm that they're there. You got to go somewhere where it's like three foot deep or less. So you might see something on Google Earth and you see like a turn or something and you're like, oh, that looks cool. And then you get there and it's you know 20 feet deep. So move on, you know, go somewhere else. For I think sure. you still have to go to those spots and you got to see what the terrain, you know, like yeah. what it looks like at certain tides. And that's what makes it fun. Like, yeah, obviously you see the oyster beds, you know, it's shallow. But, yeah. you know, we also look for, you know, Elbows, you know, like full on, like turns. You just gotta like, you know, that's it. Can I say this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Luke really likes this. Yeah, yeah. I like I like turns and things. Yeah, you know, but but you guys know this too, and it's similar with trout fishing. Yeah. I mean, you're looking and flounder fishing. I mean, you're looking for changes in the terrain underwater. That's stuff that's going on, and there's certain things that Luke likes, and then you know we get to places, and you know we're like, does this look fishy? And then well, what can you do except, you know, put the troll motor down and Ish. run the bank? Yeah. And yeah. you see people online always asking, like, can I just get a trolling motor with spot lock and I don't need a power pole? The answer is no. No. You need both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that's pertinent to this question. Or old but... school push pole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's a push pole, man? Oh, dude, push... I, it's my worst <laughs> enemy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what's making your feet so sore. <laughs> I, my feet, my elbows. But uh, all right, so 
real quick question are y'all in tournament fishing are you always focused on sight fishing is that your goal to, i mean i guess that's everyone's goal to sight fit if, if you can be on fish and see them but how important yep. is that to you to like all right we got to be sight fishing or if you know they're in an area are you are you working through a blind casting and so so here is this, uh, this is a simple question so yeah. so basically i during a tournament no i'm not stuck on sight fishing during pre-fishing i am stuck on sight fishing yeah and by sight fishing, I mean I, just looking, just sight. You just want to see them, know they're there. But okay. but so here's the thing with sight fishing, like most of you guys know, maybe some don't. It's not just seeing the fish, but seeing the pushes too, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And Jordan has gotten a lot better at this over the past whole whole thing. At first, it, it was very interesting because and and same thing when I take people on the water. And he was more advanced than that, obviously, when we started. But uh, when we started tournament angling together, like I would see a push about there's fish. And he picked up on it in the first couple months, but yeah, it's really being able to read the water, especially yeah. some of these places we're going um, down, like Georgetown, South Carolina, um, you know, Beaufort, South Carolina. Just depending on the time of year, Charleston has clean water depending on where you are. Um, if you're up like Isle of Palms way, it's real clean. Yeah. If you're fishing any of the rivers, it's dirty. But yeah, reading the water, finding the pushes, um, you know. All yeah, because like I said before, you could be in 12 inches of water. And you can't see the bottom. And you right. can't see the fish. Right. So you got to be able to know the difference between a push from a big mullet, a red fish, and a stingray. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking for us, the most important thing, like your like back to the question, very important when we're pre-fishing. We just want to see the fish. And then once we're locked in, like maybe caught one and saw that it was a, a good size fish or saw, you know, visually uh, have seen a fish, then we come back and we can blind fish it, you know, during the tournament, no problem. Yeah. yeah. And that, and that's actually happened to us on a tournament. That's we huge. Went, that, was, that was a really good answer on that. I like that. Yeah. So it's 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 worked in the past. Seeing them beforehand is important. Knowing the area you're fishing is productive, uh, rather right. than wasting time during a tournament blind casting or trying to see a fish when you when you have no clue if they're there or not. Correct. So. Yeah. And if it's too windy, though, if it's just too windy, and we've had days on end. Mm -hmm. in georgetown and in louisiana yeah where not just jordan but luke too I and wyatt and yeah. luke's dad this is all we had to throw for days on end there's a uh, a guy named bear holman and i hear this story my friend will huffine told it to me he was uh they were on the boat and they were down out of venice and the weather sucked venice is in louisiana and they were just throwing popping corks in like 15 feet of water for bull redfish and one of the guys like i'm so tired of throwing popping cork and he said look at me when you get tired of throwing poppy, keep throwing poppy. <laughs> <laughs> That's they, it. They freaking work. They really do. They if, do. If the water's dirty, I mean, if you're looking, if people that are watching need like a, an encouragement to throw a popping court, because nobody likes to do it. It hurts your arm and it's not real. It's not fun. It's not as fun it's as throwing a spoon or no. even a, you know, a paddle tail. But if you need to know, like, I'm going to tell you right now, if it's over 15 miles an hour wind, and you cannot see the bottom of the water in two feet, throw the popping cork. Just run banks and throw the popping cork, and you'll catch fish. Yeah. It, it, so when you guys are tournament fishing, and this is just a question that that I was really curious about. So you're talking about fishing a lot of different areas. So you, you might fish tournament here in Wilmington. Then you might go fish tournament in Topsail. You might go fish tournament in Southport. You might go fish in South Carolina, you know, yeah. Louisiana. How how far in advance are you guys going out here and pre-fishing these spots? I mean, not that, you know, because I, I guess if you have more experience on the water, you know, maybe you can go down there and quickly find spots or whatever. But for your guys' team in particular, like, is there, are you going a week ahead, two weeks ahead? What does that look like for you? Because, I, yeah. I mean, I know weather conditions and all that change, but do you guys have a system there? Yeah, so so pretty much we're, we're on the industry standard for that. Um, I There's certain areas that, I've fished for a very long time at this point that I feel more comfortable in. Um, but I will say if, if we can, if time allots it, um, I like to go two weeks before the tournament or a month before the tournament, depending on how, if it's going to be the same weather pattern. And the reason for that is we're going to be on the same tide cycle. Uh, so two God. weeks before you're on the same tide cycle. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like going to be within an hour of the same thing. Um, and then for the week of the tournament, I'm getting there generally, we're getting there three days before the tournament. Yeah. So we're putting in three full days of pre-fishing. Uh, and that's for anywhere from North Carolina down through South Carolina, Georgia, um, any of that. And it, cause we fish anywhere from like Moorhead down to Southern South Carolina, um, generally. And then Louisiana, we'll put in a full week there and I'm not going weeks ahead of time in Louisiana. 
the tide's completely different, and it happens to be like 15 hours away. Yeah. So I can't. Louisiana is more just like a vacation, and maybe we'll weigh some fishing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll weigh fishing for yeah. sure. <laughs> Can we compete with the guys that live there? Uh, maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah. You know. So how much of it is luck? Like it's, getting the right. I mean, so you get, you're catching redfish, but how much how much of it do you think is really luck of like getting that right? You know, tournament winning fish. Do they really the all the tournament winners swim together? I will go ahead and tell you that there are guys that are very consistently at the top of the leaderboards. Really? I don't. Yeah, it, I don't have as much experience, but I don't think it's luck, man. I mean, I so when I got into this thing, I was like, this is going to be a fun way to like you know hang out with my business partner and get some content for these cool companies that we work with and you know get to you know go fishing and uh in a good way get away from my family <laughs> and, uh, he i love my family he but let's face it I mean, this is like a vacation slash work i mean who do, who watching doesn't want to do this i mean if you can do this yeah come do it with us come fish tournaments yeah. i mean it's fun so i can come um, fish on so your guys boat you guys what's gonna, that i said you guys gonna have me on the boat to come fish with you no, dude, All he's weird stuff. on the water. Remember? <laughs> yeah, remember W O W. Y'all keep it together. You know, Team Eastern Current. Hey, I I could be down for that, my brother. I got to learn how to cast first. Once I can do this that. Clinic over at uh, Judd's house. But and so my point was though, like you know, I got into it for all these reasons or whatever, and then I started doing it, and I'm like, you know, this is it's very strategic and it's very fun. It's a uh, it's a puzzle. It's, it's yeah, it's a puzzle. It's more than just being a guy that catches a lot of fish. You can't just be fishy and be good at tournaments. Uh, let me put it that way. Like anyone right. you see that's good at tournaments, if you don't realize how smart that person is and how like detail oriented they are and how well they are at planning, like you're missing the picture here because they have, they're doing their homework. Yeah. And I'm telling you like the strategic side of it and the tide and the time management, and then you've got everything is going to break. Because you're like a guy that runs your boat and your trailer and all your equipment harder than anyone else, so yeah. it all is—it's Murphy's law, you know. Wait, is that the right one? I, yeah, you know, I think so. It, <laughs> I'm just telling you. So that side of it to me was like super addictive because it was like I got into this to just have fun, and then I started doing it. And it was just like, oh man, I just—I really want to do more of this and like get better and at keep it. Keep fixing and... Luke's boat that keeps breaking. <laughs> God, it's so fun. Yeah, love uh, it. I don't know, man. So, just, so you're in it for the enjoyment it, and not for the money. I said, are you guys in it more for the enjoyment or are you really going after that money? Cause there's some uh, good money in yeah. tournaments. Uh, not in redfish tournaments. No, nope. Nope. Not redfish tournaments. And I will, yeah. I used to run this podcast that had only to do with redfish tournaments and everyone that I talked to. And I'm talking about guys that win bigger redfish tournaments, like the biggest redfish tournaments there are. I, dude, there is not money to be like no one's relying on that. It's a passion. Job. Yeah, it is a passion thing. Now, yeah. if you want to, if you want to chase money, you go to the bass world. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I will say that we've made we some, want to win money. We yes. want to win money. So absolutely. Dan, <laughs> if I ask you, Justin, I want to win money. But number one, I see this as just an awesome way to spend my time this year, uh, working and having fun and fishing. It's like this. I am definitely you know, in it for the competitive nature. Yeah, the myself. camaraderie, yeah. the competitive yeah. side of it. It's just like, you know, what do you do with your time? I mean, it's up to you what you do with your time. And this is just a fun way to use my time, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, that's, I think that's good because, you know, like you're, you're saying, if you're, on the, if you're on the water, you got that high pressure, you're not just out on a Saturday fishing. I mean, you're like trying to to do it so if it's all about the money then you're probably going to push somebody off the boat <laughs> it, i can imagine if you if you're you know rolling at that high level of intensity already of of being competitive and then you know you're really just like i'm in it for the money and, and don't care about other stuff i could see where that could go south pretty quick so and, and don't get me wrong i'm all i'm there's no quit in what we do um when we're fishing i'm out there to win every turn yeah um uh, but knowing in the back of my head that no one's making a living off of this you know yeah it yeah. is a passion thing and i do it for the camaraderie and i do it for the competition yeah it's yeah we're gonna win like we're gonna win a tournament 
Yeah. Like, I'm going to say that right now on the show. Like, we're not going to quit. We're holding you to it. We, we, right can, be tur- we can be tournament fishing for 30 years now. <laughs> I mean, we have to win one. I mean, at least, if, I, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like we can win a tournament, oh. guys. I'm going to say that. I right feel now. like you guys can win a tournament oh, for sure. for sure. <laughs> Thanks. You're speaking to the worst <laughs> tournament fisherman ever over here. The few tournaments I fished, <laughs> y'all y'all's looked bad, but man, mine my I, I I I fished just a few little tournaments, and my boat always breaks down, and I don't have any spots with fish in them, and then you know just none of it works <laughs> works out. But dude, yeah. I only fished one kayak tournament. That was it. I didn't even catch a fish. I, so <laughs> this show's doing me a lot of good. This is why Team we. Weird water man team weird on the water so, well Get out here's there. the saving grace the when you don't win tournaments you just want to beat your friends i can so even do that funny. so here's what's funny is when we were at the last tournament that we got third in i was like man i was like luke i don't care if we don't win it's just as long as we i don't have a lot of friends in it because i've only been doing it a year but some of my older friends Corey and richard are in it and i was like just as long as we can beat Corey and richard and alan and jason i like how you and just slid them under the bus right there us are Corey and Richard and Alan and Chase. <laughs> but like at the end of the day, I was like, well, really, I said I wanted to beat them, but I guess I'm happy with that. Yeah, if someone's going to beat us, know, might as well yeah. be a yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, let's talk. Let's jump into like uh, the gear talk, tackle talk. We had a question yep. on here. Griffin said, uh, I want to hear about the rig. I have seen the tower on the bow and it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the rig- boat first. Yeah, the boat is a 1996. You heard that right. You, that's what year you were born in, Luke. No. Yeah, I'm <laughs> six years away from it. <laughs> I was born in 1990. I've been pretty close. 1996, Hughes Red Fisher, 19 foot. 19 foot was only made for a couple of years. It's a specific model that I've been looking for. I drove to freaking Delaware to buy the boat. Delaware? Uh, it, it was like purple. It was like a no, it was raven. No, it was, it was red. It was bright red. Uh, it, it was uh, bright I that. red. And yeah, I have worked to restore the boat because I really like the layout on it, the hatches, everything. I mean, it's it's a great rig, like layout wise. Um, but yeah, what I'm running as far as gear goes on, I got dual tower. <laughs> Landon Land said you already sold it. I guess he's <laughs> buying it. It's already sold. He yeah. really wants it, and it's okay, Landon. I will sell it to you. The price goes but, up each time we put more money into it. Yeah, like, anytime you ask money. about it. <laughs> yeah. So it, I, I got a little piece of it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> full rudder owns part of the boat now, actually. So um, the motor. Yeah. <laughs> full, full rudder owns half rudder. I yeah. own like I own a prop at least somewhere. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jordan owns a lo- whole lower unit. Yeah, the lower unit's mine, buddy. Um, but anyways, yeah. So the boat is rigged, dual power poles. Um, we've got a wrap on it right now with all our sponsors that you know help support us that we really appreciate. Um, and then I've. You know, I did this whole restoration over the winter. I completely rewired it. All that's good to go. I'm running the 80-pound thrust Minn Kota Altera, um, so the self-deploy, because when we are up on that tower that you mentioned, uh, Griffin, right? Yeah, Griffin. Um, so we had a four-foot cla- casting platform that uh, a sponsor of mine last year. Uh, Two-man casting platform. It Maybe four-man. It's huge. It is. Depends yeah. on the man. Yeah. yeah. We could take this whole crew that's on this live stream right now we could all fish off top of my next my episode. Platform. We're shooting up there. And we're all of us <laughs> hanging out on the casting platform. But yeah, so we've got that casting platform four feet in the air. Me and Jordan are on it. We've, so I've got that self deploy trolling yeah. motor with the tr- up and down. That way we can get yeah, in and out of spots. You're coming up to an bed and like Trim the wind's behind you and you're like, yeah. oh crap, you can, you can deploy it and yeah. then yeah. not snap your trolling motor. Yeah. And it's actually the freshwater version. So if you've ever been scared, of running a freshwater trolling motor. I'm here to tell you that it works. That's the black ones versus the white ones. Yeah, yeah. and George will tell you I am rough on my stuff. And <laughs> we are talking about that. That, That's his middle name, Luke. Rough <laughs> on my stuff. Yeah. Tip it. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost as rough on my stuff as Jason Dale. So if you've ever seen his boat. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Like Luke's shoes, his like toes are like sticking out of the tops of all his Man, shoes. Yeah, they started as white. They end up brown. I don't know. But so besides that, <laughs> dual power poles, Altera self-deploy, uh, running a Hummingbird Helix 9. Um, do you have that connected to your Minn Kota? I do, actually. Yes. Yeah, but I don't, I don't ever use it. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I didn't know you didn't ever use it, but I, I had that at one point, and I never used it's, it. I would definitely say if I was fishing not skinny water often, if I was fishing 
like near shore points, uh, jetty points, river points, stuff like that. Very useful. Yeah. Um, for what I'm doing most of the time in two feet of water or less, it's not as big of a deal for me. For sure. For sure. What is useful with those electronics is something that I'm finding more and more is having that really good satellite imagery chip. So yeah. whatever brand you go with, I know I've got an older Garmin that doesn't take a chip, and it's driving me crazy because when I'm on Luke's boat or other friends' boats, they got the newest chips for their Simrad or their Hummingbird. Yeah, they can see every oyster bed. Yeah. You know, it's like them. it's like looking at Google Earth it, on your on your boat on, your on boat. this nice yeah. big screen. So I mean, if you guys are looking, anybody that's watching is looking to upgrade like their electronics, make sure you can see every oyster bed. Yeah, because yeah. what's I'm your chip of choice, Navionics? Navionics for around here, um, and then actually in Louisiana, I'm running the Hummingbird LA uh, Maps nice, one. Nice. It's a Hummingbird map. And I've been looking at it. the new Simrads. I want a new Simrad for my vessel. I don't know. I think somebody was – Jason Dale uses them. He loves them. Yeah. Uh, and he beats us in all the tournaments. So yeah. I'm trying to just get all the same The hotspot yeah. maps and the Simrad that Jason uses are insane. I'm going to get a Simrad so I can steal his chip and put it in mine. That's <laughs> nice. it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good idea man that's a great idea that is a good idea <laughs> no, that takes all the fun out. do y'all have yeah. certain rods reels you like to use yeah absolutely um i think we're we're mostly all now fishing loose stuff loose? Um, okay, cool. I, yeah i love loose stuff i've been with loose for uh probably five years now through guiding and stuff and and they're an awesome company and they're mostly in the freshwater world but um, I'll hold up this reel right here. This is Jordan's reel, actually. He just got it in this past week, maybe. I, yeah, I'll tell you guys, here's the honest God's truth. I still think a Shimano Stratic is the smoothest reel. I own a bunch of Stratics, but this Lose reel, the thumb knob on it's amazing. The spool, phone. the spool holds twice as much line, and I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I get a lot of wind knots. <laughs> I'm not perfect. I get a lot of wind knots. <laughs> Yeah. So, and I get it in my Stratic and in my Lose. So I want more line. Like with this Lose, I got 300 yards of 20 pound fin sling braid on it. I can get through, you know, a few, you know, three or three to five wind knots, and I still got enough line. I I, I respooled my Stratics the other day, and I got one wind knot, and I had to respool the whole freaking thing because yeah. the Stratic. I mean, it just doesn't hold a lot of line. Yeah. You got to yeah. get Luke to teach you how not to get those wind knots, man. He's not giving you all those good stuff. <laughs> I'm not sharing that one. I like watching him do that. It's a working process. So, And then also for rods, this is the main rod we're running, actually, right here um, for spinning. I use a lot of bait casters. Um, but for spinning rods, we're using a seven foot um, medium, medium action or a medium power fast action, six to 12 pound line weight. But that 6 to 12 pound line weight on here is definitely a little stouter. Um, and then the lure weight's uh, 3 16ths to 5 eighths. And this rod right here will throw a popping cork. It'll throw a spoon. Um, it'll throw a top water. It'll even throw a weedless. Um, I'm, I'm using it for – I use a spinning rod personally when I'm throwing popping cork mm -hmm. and then when I'm throwing um, soft plastics um, and spoons. And then I'm throwing a bait caster on top waters, um, under spins – like this guy right here and spinner baits. Um, what else do I throw? Chatter baits. If I'm creek, uh, yeah, crank baits. And then when I'm creek fishing, uh, throw them on just straight jig heads. Um, when I'm in more confined spaces and, and pitching, that's when I'm throwing a bait caster a lot. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And so I'm throwing strictly spinning reels and I'm using 300s, 3000s, whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah. What, yeah. Like I said, the Stratix and the Luz. The, and, you know, everyone's medium. Wait, we're generally in the medium. Yeah. You want, but for tournament fishing, you want to get that fish to the boat quick. So, I mean, you want somebody's medium that's got some, you know, got some some girth to it, got some strength to it. You don't want. <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, I looked at Corey Duraco's comment, and I'm not going to say what it says. Tell me more. I'm right. not going to say what it is, but just to make Corey, me laugh. Corey, I'll. I'll... <laughs> All right. This is going Corey. downhill quick. This is going downhill quick. Rod, will y'all show us will y'all grab one of the rods and kind of show us grip and how you like to hold it <laughs> just well, here look like, just because so you can see the difference yes. nice. <laughs> but look see this one's more like a trout rod this is a medium action by you can just look at the different actually yeah do the girth this is yeah. a medium 
action by blank. G Loomis, sure. and this is medium action by Luz. Look at yeah. the difference in the thickness. Would you say the tip action is pretty similar on those? Like with the ones girthier at the base, but can you throw the same light baits on both those rods? No. 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 Okay. Um, well, actually, you can throw the same light baits. I would say yes. You can say throw the same light baits. But you cannot throw a heavier bait on that G-Loomis. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, because it does not have the backbone. Yeah. But that softer tip on both of them, because that, that lose actually has a pretty soft tip. I can throw an eight-ounce weedless with that puppy, no problem. That's awesome. That's awesome. I need to try some of those lose rods. I've heard nothing but great things about them. The ones I they stole – I. I I rented Luke's house when they were on that trip, uh -huh. and I stole a few of them, so they're really good. I'll let you borrow one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, dude, I honestly don't know that they're missing, so congrats. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good I am. That is a sign I, of a good I, I steal them. I bring them back before you know it. I will say another shameless plug for lose rods, and they do not support us fiscally at all. Um, we Yeah, we just like their stuff. We like their stuff, um, and, and I do get a little discount through our my guide program with them, but um, – Eat, like for anyone that's interested, their stuff is super affordable. Um, new, like brand new off the shelf. You can go to Academy or online. It is very, very um, cost efficient for for what you're getting. I think that one of those reels that Jordan got is ninety nine dollars. Yeah, that's Honestly, awesome. And the, what's the main thing that we all want aside from like a smooth reel and a reel that casts far? Extremely loud on. drag, so you can hear when that fish is running. That's right. So you get stuck. <laughs> that's what we all fish. No, we want something that doesn't break. And like, I mean, I, like I said, I love the Shimano's, but the last couple of years, these uh, roller bearings have been driving me crazy. And I don't want to spend two hundred dollars, and then two weeks later, it needs a roller bearing. I mean, it's just annoying. Yeah, if you've seen what I do to my reels, I have had a reel from Lou's, a baitcaster, uh, for four years now, and I have slung literally fourteen pound fish over the gunnel with that puppy uh, mm -hmm. on a loop. God, and didn't blink an eye yeah wow. that said the strategy that's sweet that's cool yeah <laughs> well let's uh let's we're at an hour but i really want to talk to y'all because as tournament fishermen i think the, you've your limit your time's limited you need to be effective and i think the last most important thing is kind of go over the tackle just a couple baits we talked about the popping cork okay. but yep. maybe yeah, we've we got, got two it. other baits three other baits that you really like to fish all right here we go First one is going to be a soft plastic. It's got oh, a weedless. You need a paddle tail. Let me just tell you, it's got to be a paddle tail. If you're fishing with me, it's going to be a paddle tail. This right here is a Fathom Inshore Tattle Tail, right? I love that name. It's yeah. A great name. Yeah, they, they just launched their inshore stuff not too long ago, right? Like a year and, and, it's and a half been, it's been, No, it's been a couple of years now, but they're one of our sponsors. But I will tell you what. And Jordan can attest to this. I don't just like say, "Oh yeah, I love the Fathom soft plastics," and don't throw them. I was. A, I'm gonna be honest. I was a slow. I was a slow uh, adapter. A, adapter. Yeah. You know, I was like, you know, stuck in my ways of the things I fished before we got them as a sponsor. And right from the get go, Luke was like, "I love the action. It's got a huge paddle tail. Lots of vibration in the water. Um, cool. And it's it's very pliable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and so right here, this is what we're gonna rig it on. This is very similar to that Texas Eye, Judd. Um, and the only reason oh, I'm yeah, showing sweet. one is because it's what I had in my tackle box. Um, and this one actually does have a slightly larger hook. I'm sure those Texas eyes come in different size hooks, but this hook right here fits the, the soft plastic. So we're just rigging that right there. So this is basically a Texas rig, um, with the weight already pinned to the front. I actually used, before these were like invented, I used to throw a lot of Texas rigs, um, in, in salt water and use the bullet weights. And then I would just pin um, the the bullet weight up front with a piece of toothpick. But this yeah. came out, and it's been awesome. Second thing uh, that we use a lot is a gold spoon. Uh, this right here is an Aqua Dream gold spoon. Love these spoons. Um, they're pretty cost effective. They actually have compared. So this is a Johnson Gold Golden Minnow right here, and this is what like your typical spoon is. You can get these at Walmart. They're they're great spoons, but I will say the the bar or the the hook will wear out pretty easily on this puppy. Um, and the difference with this Aqua Dream is that you can actually change the hook out. Oh, that's right neat. There. There's a little screw right there. And so if you, I mean, if you roll that edge over, which I haven't actually rolled one of these edges over yet, even on oysters or whatever, but you can pop that hook right out. And yeah, that's super cool. And that, that three-dimensional print on there helps it so that, like, light can shine. You see what I'm saying? 
Oh yeah, catch catch oh, us yeah, uh, light at a few more angles. I catch it at a lot more angles. And yeah. I'm gonna give you one more quick bait. Since I know you only asked for two. No, no, but, you could do as many as you want. This is good stuff here. Gotcha. Fathom Inshore um, also does this underspin right here. This thing is awesome search bait. And when I say search bait, I mean we're pre-fishing dirty water, uh, or you're just exploring a new area. A search bait's gonna be like uh, anything that throws off a lot of flash, a lot of vibration. Um, a lot of show in the water, a lot of noise in the water. It's just a little more nimble spinner bait. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this kind of does what a spinner bait does. Instead of throwing that spinner bait out and having the blade away from the jig, um, this this willow blade actually is going to come in right under the hook. Um, and then when you rig this up with a soft plastic, and I'll do it right here, um, but that gold blade is just going to add so much more flash to your lure because when you're running it through the water – you're getting vibration from that tail and that spinner, that blade right there is going to come right under and it's got a bear, ball bearing swivel, like just like you'd run on the front of the spoon. Um, we'll get you some underwater GoPro footage. Yeah, that 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 puppy right there will catch you some fish in dirty water. Yeah, um, those I'll, underspins are, yeah, that looks yummy. Those are, those are yeah. awesome baits. Now, tell <laughs> me about your retrieval on those. Uh, so I think one of the benefits of that underspin is like, a spinner bait. If you needed to stop and jig it, you're kind of defeating the purpose of a spinner bait. Probably not going to get a bite. Sure. But do you ever jig that bait? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, fishing. I was fishing actually pre-fishing down Georgetown. I uh, was with my buddy Hunter Scoggins, and this Jordan had to bail out from a pre-fishing trip because his family got sick or something crazy happened. I was like, dude, don't worry about it. I'll call Sounds my like yeah. I'll call my buddy and we'll go down here. And, and so we fished this new creek that I've never fished before. Lots of deep little pockets. Dude, we didn't catch a fish for like three miles. We finally got in the back of this creek. And I just took one of these things and threw it out and just let it sit on the bottom. Easy. Every time that thing would come up and eat it. But yeah, you can you can jig it. You can run it. Slow roll it on the bottom. You can keep it up towards the top. Um, that's what's kind of great about it. But here, let me add something with those right there. They're soaked in Procure. Yeah. But don't forget. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. You need to add Procure to these like every three to five casts. So keep a big stinky bottle of Procure in your pocket. That one's for you, Corey. Because <laughs> the stink is where it's at. Yeah. No, no. The stink no, no, is where it's at. Yeah. Well, if you're if you are fishing dirty water and looking for new fish, I like. Uh, you want vibration and stink. Yeah. I mean, that's anything what we, you can add to the arsenal to help you. Why not? Absolutely. We're we're trying to take advantage of whatever we can. All right, all right. So then and the, here's and then this is also a good search bait right here. Top water plug, obviously. That's a skitter walk. That's that uh, color doesn't work though. Do you have any that, other colors? That's in Brock special. <laughs> yeah. I actually literally never throw this color, but I'm glad you do, Judd. Uh, that one's that's awesome. actually mine. And this is what we do. No, but these when are pre fishing. My, these are my favorite top water right here. These are the Super Spook Juniors. Do I like what, these. What is different between these two plugs? Um, one of them has circular hooks. And the other one ha has <laughs> no hooks. normal hooks. Yeah, the circular hooks are just where we remove the hook. That's when we're pre-fishing and we don't want to catch the fish and we want to see if they're still there. So that's a spot that we have been yeah. to before that has fish. We throw that puppy out. The fish strikes it. We just peace out. We know they're there. All right, nice. and if I can add anything to tackle, I already told you guys about – yeah, if you haven't heard about popping corks, you, cork, you, you, didn't, <laughs> I, you didn't tell us anything about be, popping corks. I'm gonna be the guy that tells you about the popping cork because maybe some people don't know, and I'm gonna help them. So go get a popping cork. Don't buy the round one for redfish. Buy this one because that square top is gonna hit the water. You're gonna pull that rod straight down hard as you can, and it makes a gunk sound and a giant splash. And then you got this tiny little three-inch gulp shrimp. Or one of these tattletales behind it. I've caught them on both. Three inch gulp shrimp, though. If you really want to go catch a fish tomorrow, go <laughs> yeah, get this true. and go get this and put about 12 to 16 inches of leader on there. Yeah. And you go run a bank for three hours and tell me how many redfish and trout you caught tomorrow. Please tell All me. All right, I'll do it. I'm going to do it. And All it's, day. it's not sexy. You, you want to go with me, Jess? You Let's know, do it. people Let's do like, it. Oh, Pop a cord. Oh, pop a cord. My hand hurts. Well, if you do it, you're going to catch fish. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan is the new popping cork advocate of fish. You should start a cork company. You should. Man. Called Corking with Jordy. 
I, I need I need like a popping cork counter on this episode where every time he says popping cork, it just adds one to it. I hope you go back and edit this with a popping cork counter. Oh my Dude, god, that's, that's the good. That's the best part and the worst part about this show is we don't edit anything, so I'm too lazy for that. You know, it's, it's, never, like, it's never too late to start. I talk to so many people that are too like, late. like down on it, so I'm just trying to be like devil's advocate and be like, man, some people just want to catch fish, you know? I it love the popping cork. I think it's, it's genius. I'm more dude. of a Carolina rig guy myself. <laughs> I'd like to put a Carolina rig under a popping cork. Easy. Easy. All right. Well, we have not gone to that level yet. But if you want to talk about it, don't say it. All right. No, we're, we're not going to say We're not even going to tell you we're about not say it. Never okay. mind. We'll do a whole other show on that topic right Just there. Just Carolina rig. Nope. No, it's something like that, though. Yes. Is something you invented with a popping cork? No, nope. don't nope. worry about it. I didn't invent it, but it's like a Carolina rig. And some people use it in tournaments. Just stop. Just stop. And that's well, it. Come on. Come on. Keep going. I, you've already piqued my curiosity. Uh, Billy's going to pull it out of you now. I'm going to, yeah. Like, and Luke is Take another sip of that whiskey Corey, and keep hey, on coming. Paco is going to tell you in the comments exactly how to do yeah, it. Yeah, Corey, if you want to talk, speak to your favorite rig, the yes. Carolina rig, the artificial Carolina rig, what? you're more than welcome to in the comments, but we will not speak to it on this show. It will oh, not be. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we don't, he won't even let me throw it. If you, guys want, if you guys want to come back on the show, I'm going to need some more information. Just look up <laughs> How to Fish a Carolina Rig on the Tactical Bassing YouTube channel, and you'll figure out. How to out. Fish a Carolina Rig in there tournaments. Oh, that man. Is, that's it. All right, All right guys. That's they're, awesome. They're, uh, they're, we're, they're spilling too much information here. We're going to have to kick them off the show. Oh, Jim, your, your camera broke. Oh, imagine that. What's that? Oh, look how it froze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll do some justice here. Well, guys, we appreciate you being on the show. Is there any last thoughts of two dudes that are sitting on their couch right now wishing they were tournament fishing and they wanted to start a team? What advice would you give them? I Definitely, if there are two dudes sitting on the same couch together that want to start a team, <laughs> they are halfway there. All they got to do is click sign up on the next tournament. Yeah. But no, really. What is the next tournament? What about the guys that aren't sitting on a couch? Right. No, no, seriously. No, seriously, though. This is the one thing that I wanted to make very clear. That tournament fishing is a blast, and you should come do it with us. Um, the next tournament that's local, and I say local to us, regional to us, I guess, is going to be in November, and that's down in Charleston, South Carolina. That's the Southern Redfish Cup. Um, you We're going to be in Louisiana next month. Yeah, but that's for the championship of the IFA, which you cannot qualify for unless you fished to a IFA events, even if you've blown up a motor. It still counts. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> come – Fish with us, Southern Redfish Cup. Check oh, that yeah. out. You can start the Southern Redfish Cup in November. Cause, so they had two – it's a three-tournament series yeah. in Charleston and Georgetown. And this is only two hours from here, guys. You can tow your boat two hours. It's not that far. It's a huge, beautiful fishery. Don't want Georgetown? Yeah, yeah, Georgetown. Yeah. yeah. I'm selling them on Georgetown. Like you're Charleston. Yeah. yeah. But the series is Georgetown Charleston. And the first one was supposed to be in – earlier this year it got – canceled and rescheduled so now the series is starting in november, november. yeah november in charleston. in charleston december in beaufort and then january, and january the in championship georgetown. in georgetown yeah and it sounds like a lot to you know you've got to go down and pre-fish and you got to book a room and it i mean it is it's a commitment um but it is a very fun commitment there's a lot yeah. of good camaraderie um there's a lot of good we will be cooking shrimp and chorizo tacos yeah, yeah you've can... seen those on instagram man i'm coming ribeyes Lots of revise. Come on down. Yeah. yeah, no, just do it. Just do one tournament. That's the advice. Just yeah, go do one tournament. You don't have to tournament. do all three of them. What yeah. is it, about 300 bucks a tournament? Yeah, uh, Southern Redfish is like 300 350 400 somewhere in there for the whole thing. And that includes your entry and TWT, I believe. Um, and it's it's if you want to dabble in it, just come fish one. Um, and and, see and what what's the potential winnings? Because some people... Some I think, people watching this probably just want to know, well, what can I win? Yeah, Southern Redfish Cup, I believe, this year. And do not quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that is $5,000 guaranteed first place for each event. Um, which, you know, if you go fish a couple days and make five grand, I ain't bad. But also, if you do well in the Southern Redfish Cup, yeah. you can qualify for the Elite Series. No, no, no. What this is, is what called? you got to say. It's called the Redfish World Series. The Redfish World Series, which Jason, who <laughs> tuned in, <laughs> are, it's invite only, and they're going to that in Louisiana in like a week. So we want to qualify for that so, so we, we can, can go fish with them. them. Yeah. Basically, so we can 
go cook for them while they beat us another time. Yeah, exactly. and if you want to make a small living, you can. Uh, Jason Dale, I heard he'll pay for you to drive his boat to Louisiana whenever he's got to go down there. <laughs> that is absolutely. If you true. can live off of a few hundred bucks a year, that'd be a great job for you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, actually, and if you if you're an Evan Rude mechanic, then you could probably. <laughs> Probably like put you on salary, kind of like a nanny. Yeah, like a he boat, will boat nanny. A boat I, nanny. Yeah, will retain her a good Evan Rude. Okay, I've heard that. That travels. So Looking speaking for- of trolls and Jason Dale, he hopped on here. I know. And, uh, they're, they're dudes and we're totally he said, hey, what did I miss? Can y'all start over? <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Here we go. Well, cool. With that, maybe we should So we today should on Eastern Current, we're going to be talking to Luke Tippett and Jordan Nason about tournament fishing. <laughs> well, guys... Yeah. Really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you so much. I think Judson's camera is still uh, doing whatever, so I'll, I'll jump on my camera and just say thank you guys so much for being being a part of the show. Yeah, Thanks for bringing yeah. so much value and, and really some really funny stories. I mean, we're all friends outside of this and fishing, so I knew it was going to be a fun episode. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be this fun, though, so I really appreciate that. I know. We haven't um, gone to an hour 20 in a while. We haven't gone to an hour 20. Yeah, usually we're at, at an hour, which, you know. Who cares? I, I, I still want to know about that rig we're talking about, this fake Carolina hey, rig. Hey, just have us on again, man. I tell you what, it'll be even more fun. You get a bigger space, all four of us in the same spot. We'll bring the John J. Bowman. It'll be a good time. Nice. <laughs> Unofficially yeah. sponsored. Yeah, we'll see about no, that. No, we got it. Smoothies. Smoothies from Smoothie yeah, King. Well, yeah, we're doing smoothies from Smoothie King. That's what we'll have next show. <laughs> I'll bring something to put in the smoothie. Oh, man. <laughs> Justin's kid. Sorry, I'm not doing you any justice here. <laughs> oh gosh you're trying no- to trash my reputation i hope nobody screenshots that there's a bunch of memes coming hey, up, man. He's sleeping. Wake him up. <laughs> well guys appreciate you coming on the show we'll definitely have you on again thank you guys so much and jason dell be sure to rewatch this because they maybe you're talking a little trash but really gave you some good respect there as well so what do you mean jason is we told them all your spots yeah, yeah. so you can rewatch it sim red cortex have been stolen I would just but, watch your I, I'd watch your equipment and make sure your chip is well hidden. And for those of y'all watching that want to be more effective next time in the water, Landon Ray did say he does have Luke's uh, GPS coordinates. You should DM him for pricing. <laughs> I just want to cut Landon. That's all I want. Awesome guys. Well, hey, we'll catch you later. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank and, you guys for having ooh, us. All right, thank you. See you guys. Later. All right, man. That's it, Judson. I don't think your camera is working. But that's all right. We will. Everybody's uh, seen enough of me tonight. Everybody can hear you. So, hey, guys, if you're tuning in, uh, be sure to check out the audio podcast tomorrow. We're going to be uploading that either later tonight or early in the morning. And uh, share that with your friends, your family, whatever. Uh, Share this video, if you don't mind, uh, here on YouTube or on Facebook as well. And it's going to be on YouTube, so you can check it out there. So a lot of ways to rewatch the video and share the video uh, and also the podcast as well. So next week we're going to be back. We're probably going to be talking about fishing for albacores. They're kind of moving in. And Judd and I might even try to get on the boat and go fly fish for one we'll see we'll see we've talked about it if uh I, if i can break up my schedule a little bit and, and make that happen no we need to you we like that i just committed happen. myself to fishing off of your boat <laughs> <laughs> it's so, like 400 dollars for a half day 400 bucks for a half day all right well i'm gonna have to i hope my wife doesn't watch this <laughs> <laughs> all right guys hey this is billy thorpe uh and Judson, judd brock over here and judd brock over there really appreciate uh everyone tuning in and we'll see you next week 8 o'clock live on Facebook. Until then, go check out our podcast uh, anywhere podcasts can be found. That's it, man. Later. Show 13.